What's going on everybody? It's been a while since I've made a video and uh, I just want to kind of talk and rant about um, some things that are going on in my life and just how good God is. And You know, I had to give a, uh, a little message in one of my life groups about a, a week or two ago and it was about the salt and light of the earth. And um, everyone said I did a good job, you know, a um, little pat on the back, that a boy, but... Um, I wish I would have been able to have this platform that I have right now where I can just speak from the heart and not have anything drafted up or edited or have to try to have some structure. Because this uh, structure, I don't really know. Sorry, that's my dog, Moses. Hey, quiet. Um, right now, it's just, uh, see, he wants to say hello. Settle down, buddy. Right now, um... It's just it's just one of those things. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this video out because this dog just wants love and attention. And I want to talk about Jesus. And I want to talk about the importance of being the salt and light of the earth. And, you know, I wasn't always a Christian. And I said it in that group. is like no one gives a bad name to a Christian like another Christian. And one of the most comforting and terrifying verses in the Bible, I think, is... Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And it's great because whatever anyone has done to me, they're going to get what's coming to them because we all reap what we sow. But it goes two ways. It's a double-edged sword. Whatever I've done to others will be done unto me. And how I've treated others is how I will be treated. It's the golden rule. <clears throat> and... um you know, I'm saved by grace. I am I am a believer of Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. But what about those that aren't saved? You know what I mean? What about those that need grace and mercy from the Lord and from us, from the other believers? Because um, like I said, I wasn't always a Christian. I wasn't always a good man. I wasn't always where I'm at right now. I've struggled with a lot of mental health and... Um, struggled with a lot of addiction and and just being out of my mind and being lost and alone and just having that veil over my eyes that uh the bible talks about you know it talks about how satan himself puts um a veil over our eyes to to shield us from the glory of knowing god i'm paraphrasing obviously but um i was just like that i i, I didn't know god and i didn't know his glorious goodness. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know that he is everything that he says he is. I just was just living and doing me, you know what I mean? And, and you know, Alistair Crawley said that do as thou wilt will be the sum of the law and or the whole of the law, whatever. Who cares what he says? He's a moron. Influenced a lot of people, but took a, has taken a lot of people down with him with his philosophy and his Satanism. But I just want to be the light of the world, man. It says that, you know, you can't, it's, you don't hide it under a basket. And I, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever gone camping or been out in the wilderness, but when you're trekking all day and you're porting canoes and have packs on your back and you get back to your camp and you can see the lanterns or the fire and you can see the the camp isn't very far away it's like the best feeling in the world because it's like finally i get refuge finally i get rest finally it's it's almost like if you get caught out in the rain you know what i mean and you're stuck in the rain and you're just soaking and soggy and wet and miserable but once you get home you take a shower a hot shower you eat some soup you eat something warm meal and um that feeling that washes over you is, is one of the most comforting and, and, and just like blissful feelings ever. Um, and it's short lived obviously, but that's what it's like to be a Christian. And, and that's how it says is we're not supposed to be a basket or a light held on hidden under a basket. We're supposed to put it on top of a hilltop for everyone to see. So everyone can come to us. It's like a beacon and we're supposed to be a beacon of hope and light and like being the salt is purity and being like 
just living out this this thing that we call Christianity, this this relationship with Jesus Christ is is what we're supposed to do. It's what we're called to do, and we're supposed to. People will know us by the fruit of our spirit. Um, because our life will bear fruit. We'll have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, fortitude, and we'll have self-control. And people will stand, will be set apart because that's what God does for us as believers. Like, I have an identity now, you know, and so do all of us that believe in the Lord. It's like, we have an identity and we've been grafted into his family, which means we're adopted and we're now the royalty and we are everything that he says we are and we have authority over principalities and things in heavenly places and we have all this responsibility but like the like the parable says is like much that is given much will be expected and there's a lot that's expected of us as, as christians and i'm not perfect you know neither are you or anyone else all fall short of the glory of god and I, I won't lie, I willfully sin on a daily basis and I try to be better and do better and be conscious of it and try not to do it and repent and all that other stuff. But it's about being the salt of the light and it's like salt is used for flavor. Like how can we, how can you re-salt something if it loses its flavor? Well, the thing that I believe is the way that we preserve ourselves is by preserving the word of God. Because in the beginning, the Word was God and was with God, and, and Jesus Christ is the Word, right? And so if that's the case, then the Scriptures are Jesus. They are God, because God is love. God is light. There is no darkness in Him, right? So if we are adopted and we are a child of God and we are royalty, we are made in the image of God, we are supposed to be the secondary light, because all light comes from the source, and that's Jesus Christ. And we need to let our light shine in this dark times, in this dark place, because it's not going to get any better, I believe. I think it's only going to get worse. And it's the Bible talks about how Christians will be persecuted. And we don't know what persecution, real persecution here is in the States. Like, we have our religious freedom. Yes, it will go away in the future, I believe. I believe that there will be a lot more persecution. But there's people dying, people being martyred for their beliefs, like, all over the world. They can't even share the gospel like we can or talk about it freely. Or me right now, like, if if I were to post this in another country, the secret police would come and, and detain me and interrogate me. And we all know what interrogation really means, you know, um... We are blessed. We live in this blessed country, and it's so important. Like, not to just, I don't know how to share the gospel with people. Like, I got saved at a McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like, when I wasn't a believer, I was a junkie on the street living homeless, and somebody prayed for me, and I felt the presence of God, and I, it was undeniable, and I had to turn my life and my will over to the Lord because He revealed Himself to me. And like I've said in other videos, it's like, have you ever been like going about your business and you think you're alone and you're talking to yourself or you're doing kind of like weird stuff and you turn around and someone's standing there and you're like, how long have you been standing there? You're like maybe five minutes. You're like five minutes? Like you've been there that long? Like, and that's what it was like. It's like Jesus, when he revealed himself to me, it was like he had been standing there the whole time. I just had to stop what I was doing and acknowledge his presence. And when I did that, it was like so powerful and so subtle. And it was undeniable. Like, But the best way I know how to be a Christian is by living it out and doing what the word says. Because like I said, Jesus is the word. He is the gospel. He is the scriptures. He is everything that the prophets talked about. He is the first. He is the last. He is the one who is, who was, and is to come. I mean, I I love reading the Bible now. Like, the wisdom that has given me, you know, it says in 2 Timothy that all scripture is used for correction and as God breathed. You know, and is used for producing a seed of righteousness. Now, I'm butchering that and paraphrasing, but you get the idea. Like, I turn to the scripture, I turn to the Bible to 
seek counsel for myself and offer counsel to others. And I had a friend today, she's going through some things at work and the Lord put it on my heart to reach out to her and just check in and see how she's doing. And I don't know the circumstances, but I can pray for her. I can offer her scripture, biblical scripture, because I sent her the, I think it was James 124, and it said, count it all joy when we go through various trials, because it produces patience and strengthens our faith. You know, and I do, I count it all joy, everything that I've been through, like, God has been with me all this time and is always there and never will abandon and forsake me, never abandon and forsaken you. It's like, no matter what you've done, like what, what, what you've done to screw up or what sins, like you don't think God knew those things before. It says like he knew all things. Before, he knew you exactly everything that you would do, like good or bad, like before the creation of the earth. And he still chose to set you apart for his special purpose and, being set apart is like we are. He is. We are the clay, and he is the the pot. Like he is the 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 potter, right? And it, Paul talks about how some vessels are used for rubbish, like waste cans, and some are used for special purpose, like china, fine china, right, for dinner parties or whatever. But the thing is, is it's not. It's up. See, it's it's up to us to decide about what kind of vessels we want to be. Because God set us all apart for his special purpose. And it's like we can be a vessel that's an urn that's used for death, our sinful fallen nature. We can fill it with our sinful nature and that it only produces death so it becomes an urn. Or we can be a vessel of the Holy Spirit and fill it up to overflowing. It's called a bubbling spring. So it spills out and covers the earth. That is being the salt of the light of the earth. Is our goodness, our knowledge of the scripture, knowledge of Jesus, our personal relationship with Jesus Christ is what allows us to be this beacon in this dark world is because we think different. We see things through a Christian lens. We see the world differently than the rest of the world. I know I do. I didn't used to see it the same way. I didn't. I never used to see it like. I never used to see the goodness of God. Like I talk about that veil. Like it was always about me, 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 being self-centered. I was ungrateful. I. It was all about how to satisfy my flesh. Things that. My just everything that the Bible talks about. But I do know that. God is real. Jesus is real. He will return again. I believe in the last days. I believe that the scripture is true. The Bible, from cover to cover, end to end, top to bottom. And it scares me because, like I said, no one gives a bad name a Christian like another Christian. And I believe I'm Christian, but... How do I remedy that? It's like I have to have a better relationship with Jesus Christ and not choose things of this world, but choose him because the word says we can't have two masters. You know, and I need to constantly choose every day. I need to choose Jesus each and every moment because at any moment this ride could be over with. This roller coaster of life could be over with. You know what I mean? What do I want to do? What do I want to spend my last moments regretting not spending enough time with the Lord or looking back on my life, regretting not being better to people or not trying to be my best self? Or do I want to each and every moment let Jesus change me and remove the things that are not of him and replace it with the Holy Spirit so I can become more like him? So it gets to be a point where people look at me, they're like, something's different about you. They don't see me anymore. They see the Christ in me. And then I become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, the mouthpiece. And I'm able to do the will of the Lord. And that's being the salt and light. And I believe. I just... I wish I could just mind meld with you guys and you would know what I've been through or what he's carried me through. 
the blessings that he gives me each and every day, the knowledge that he's given me through the word and the scripture. It's just, my life is so much better and so much more beautiful with Jesus Christ in it, and I wish everyone could share that with me. But it's a decision that everyone has to make for themselves. Everyone has to choose for themselves. It's The sad thing is, is it's an open invitation. Jesus offers it to everyone, like anyone and everyone that will listen. And my, on my day of judgment, I don't want him to say you didn't choose me. I don't want to, on my day of judgment for him to say that you still have unforgiveness in your heart. Because I believe for unforgiveness is a capital punishment in heaven. Jesus died for our, our sins and for the forgiveness of man. No matter what you've done or how horrible things you've done to people or the unspeakable things that the wickedness of the hearts of men do to each other, it is all forgiven. It is all forgiven. Like even Jeffrey Dahmer, right? People are like, oh, he's such a terrible person. Well, at the end of his life, he became a Christian and everything has been washed away, all of his sins. If, if he truly had a repentful heart and meant it. Because that's Jesus saves everyone, not just you or me. Or, he saves everyone, everyone that a a answers the call. That everyone that cries out upon the Lord, they shall be saved. God wants to save you. God loves you more than you would ever imagine. It says that each numbered, each one of our hairs is numbered on our head. That's how much time and detail God put into crafting you in your mother's womb. We need more believers out there. And you don't have to stand on a soapbox. I don't got to stand on a soapbox. All I have to do is just live it. Live out this thing that we call faith. And in times of persecution, in times of doubt, we just look to the scriptures once again because that is Jesus. And God chose to reveal himself to certain people throughout human history. Not only because they would teach us how to have a relationship with him, but God wants family. God is all about family. He's all about healing and restoration. He's all about, like I said, grafting us in. And I just want you to know that you are accepted, you are loved. You're right where you need to be. I'm starting to rant and mumble, so God bless you guys. Peace. God bless.